Right now I'm at betterwaters.com. This is about Lilith. I always talk to you guys about her. Now this is what it, it, it starts with. There's 211 pages. The Case for Lilith is the most authoritative book on the Jewish Lilith. It reveals 23 outstanding, astounding biblical evidences that show how ancient rabbis concluded she is the serpent. It also explains how her legend is not only just consistent with is not only just consistent with traditional Judaic Christian teachings, but how her legend solves many long-lasting biblical mysteries, such as why the serpent is said to bear seed like Eve. One moment, going on down. And it says right here, uh, no discussion of Lilith is, the, is complete without studying Azazel. See why Azazel is the infamous seed of the serpent Lilith. The case for Lilith. Of all the ancient Jewish myths, the story of Lilith is undoubtedly the most fascinating. According to her legend, Lilith was the first wife of Adam, but she was a failed mate who rebelled against her husband and fled from the garden to become the mother of demons. Her legend has also influenced more modern monster mythologies than any other Jewish myth. Her tale was not only the original source material for medieval, for medieval beliefs in succubi and night hags, but as the mother of estries. She, uh, she also lies as the root of modern vampire lore. Her creation story also filled ancient Jewish notions about golems and has thus also inspired the modern version of this myth, Frankenstein. Although Lilith is not widely known among those normally considered well-versed in scripture, given the validity of her legend, her prominence in the Bible more than matches her prominence in modern monster mythologies. As we shall see, Lilith is the first Sota, the archetype of the adulterous wife who turned aside from her husband and who was subjected to the supernatural bitter water trial. She is the serpent who caused Adam and Eve to fall. She and her seed are the chess pieces of Lucifer's struggle against God and man. Her firstborn, Azazel, is the infamous seed of the serpent. He is locked in the epic battle with the promise of the seed of Eve. Due to his exalted position, Azazel plays a prominent role in Israel's Yom Kippur ceremony. He is the recipient of the sacrificial scapegoat, or literally, the goat to Azazel. This, if you listen to these, they sacrifice to this guy. There are intriguing evidences that are in her quest to conceive Azazel. Lilith was responsible for bringing upon earth the race of Nephilim, the giant offspring of angels and women. And as such, she was the ultimate cause for Noah's flood. According to commonly known versions of her legend, Lilith was created by God from the soil at the, of the earth at the same time as Adam. This is in Genesis chapter 5, mind you. She was intended as Adam's mate, but Lilith was rebellious against her husband. She quarreled continuously with Adam and refused to sexually submit to him from an inferior position below. At her rebellion's culmination, culmination she released her long hair and shouted the effable name of God, the ineffable name of God. She therefore supernaturally sprouted wings and took fright from the garden. After her departure, Adam became lonely and sought to recover his errant wife. At his behalf, Jehovah sent, re sent three angels to return her. They found Lilith in the midst of the Red Sea, but she, but she refused to return with them. She chose instead to become the mother of demons. She did this not only by mating with demons, but by also stealing semen from men at night while they slept. Because of Lilith's refusal, the angels cursed her, her that very day cursed her that very day 100 of her cursed her that that very day 100 of her demon seed would die and Adam and for Adam God created Eve as a replacement for his rebellious wife in revenge Lilith resolved resolved that she would visit Eve's children in childbirth and kills those that she found were not protected by the names of the three angels as we shall see, there are deeper mysteries to Lilith's legend that may be derived from a careful study of the biblical text. These details confirm tenets held by Zora of Kaaba concerning Lilith. You've got to understand, these Kaaba worshippers are demon worshippers. They believe this stuff, and something that they're saying obviously has to be true. And I'm not saying all of this is true. I'm saying that there is truth to what they're saying. The Zohar is perhaps the most important books on Lilith outside of the Bible. The Zohar explains Lilith's rebellious nature. It states that after God had formed Adam and, and Lilith's bodies from the earth, Lilith became animated by the defective light of Lucifer, whereas Adam became animated by the holy spark of God's perfect light. From Genesis, it is apparent that Lucifer's defective life entered through Lilith through defiling Enter Lilith through a defiling mist which erupted from the ground and watered her body. This preempted God's spirit in animating her. Therefore, Lilith is said to be created from filth and sediment, whereas Adam is said to be created from dry dust. 
and he was untouched by the defying by the defiling mist. He was animated by God's perfect light that entered him with the breath of God's Holy Spirit filled and with him God's perfect light that entered him with the breath of God's Holy Spirit filled his nostrils. According to the Zohar and the numerous biblical evidences, Lilith later returned to the garter under the title of the serpent. Genesis revealed that the serpent Lilith deceived Eve into eating of the forbidden tree and thereby, thereby, thereby caused her and Adam to fall. Because of this, God cursed the serpent Lilith and her seed. He declared that a doom rivalry would exist between Lilith and Eve and between their seed. Lilith would bruise the heel of Eve's seed and Eve would she would crush the head of Lilith. Lilith being identified, one moment. One second. Like this just messed up on me. Uh, Lilith being identified as the serpent also links her to the Leviathan, which Job 26 and Isaiah 27 describe as a winged serpent fleeing, be fleeing before God. Leviathan is commonly held to refer as the serpent of Eden, and thus Lilith. From a study of Leviathan, we learn again that Lucifer is intimately fused with Lilith, and that Lilith was created in the same fashion as Adam. She was a golem fashioned from the dust of the earth and animated by Lucifer's defective light. Lilith's legend in ancient and preceded is ancient and precedes Judaism. Her first mention is found in Sumerian King List, which dates about 2400 BCE. That list states the father of the great hero Gilgamesh is Lilu Dimun. The first substantial written record of Lilith comes in the epic Gilgamesh in the Hulupu tree, Hulu, Hulupu tree, circa 20, 2000 BCE. In that epic, the demon is Lilith and the snake haunt a great tree situated in the holy garden of gods as we shall see later this st this story this this tale has strong parallels with genesis story of the garden of eden and the tree of knowledge and good of evil and good and, and of good and evil lilith appears by name only once in the bible this comes in isaiah 34 which describes her as a bird-like demon who dwells in an utterly desolate place at the ocean's floor she is intimately fused with the snake, and she is a killer of younglings. There is also a reference to Lilith in Proverbs 30 under the title of Aluka. Proverbs' heavily mystic passage speaks of two types of barren women given over, given power, given over to the power of Aluka. Aluka serves as a source of cursing and death to one barren woman and a catalyst in granting promised seed to the other. As we shall see, Aluka has strong parallels to the cursing agent in the bitter water trial of Soda. According to the Zohar, this agent is the spirit of Lilith. In the Middle Ages, legends uh, became prevalent with the Luca was the mother of estries, female bird-like winged monsters whom were said to devour children and drink their blood. Estries are the earliest known incarnations of the modern vampire legend, and their similarity to Lilith is, are obvious. Lilith makes a handful of appearances in the Talmud, 400 CE. Her mentions are painfully brief as the writer assumed that she is the, that she is a known entity to the reader. One Talmudic warning that she comes in secret at night to men in their sleep, such as a succubus or night hack, to steal semen from men. Another writer holds that she stole semen from Adam in such a manner, and this and and with this she inseminated her first seed. Lilith's legend struck a chord in medieval Christian circles. Michelangelo depicted Lilith as a serpent in his famous paintings on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and she is likewise depicted as a tempting serpent in the carving of the Notre Dame Cathedral in France. Lilith appears in many artworks as of the era as the serpent. Most people acquainted with the Bible consider Lilith's legend as merely a colorful and interesting fictional myth with no biblical basis. This is certainly an understandable position, as the legend's versions of early events in the garden appear completely incongruous incongruous with the with the plain written record of Genesis as, as it is commonly known. Yet, if there is such a scant evidence for Lilith, how could the rabbis of the Talmud and Zohar teach her existence? These writers are the most learned and sophisticated Jewish scholars over the last 2,000 years. Okay. On what basis did the, the sage experts adopt, uh, adopt ideas that appear in conflict with the plain biblical record? As we shall see, the plain biblical record is perhaps not so plain after all. There is actual numerous textual evidences in the in, in Genesis supporting most of Lilith's um, Lil, Lilith's legend. Most of Lilith's legend. This evidence lies in the literal Hebrew account, 
and the logistical deductions that may be therefore derived by applying the literal wording. This Genesis evidence supports all the essential facets of Lilith legend, such as why she is said to be created from mud and muck and not dust like Adam. It also identifies her as the serpent. The analysis by which will be developed in this section is probably much the, much the same means by which ancient rabbis originally concluded details of her legend. Based solely on biblical evidence, this analysis makes strong case for Lilith and details, excuse me, and details of her history and nature surmised from the uh, from the analysis is remarkably in sync with most of her ancient legends both jewish and non-jewish here we go i found that a coherent collection of biblical arguments supporting the case for lilith has been there too non-existent in the public domain in fact the only argument usually put forth that jizina speaks of two account, two creation accounts of man and woman is almost always presented in a most outrageously flawed manner the faulty argument generally follows the notion that none of the creation events described in Gen 2 are a recap or retelling of the... Thank you! Are a recap or retelling of the events in Gen 1. Thus, the reasoning goes that Gen 1, 26 speaks the creation of man and woman, and Gen 2, 18, 22, thus speaks the creation of Eve. The two passages must refer to, to different events. That's because this person, whoever, whoever these rabbis are, don't understand that the first people were not Adam and Eve, and that Azazel is not the child of Lilith. He probably was her baby's daddy. Can you dig it? But we're going to keep pushing through, and we're going to finish this off. This simplistic argument is based on an outrageously faulty logic. If all goes, Gen 2 was uh, was read documenting new events not specified in Gen 1. Then Gen 2 was simply, there was also two atoms. Would, would apply there was also two atoms. Furthermore, there would, be two whole, there would be two whole planets with each its own ocean, atmosphere, and biosphere. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true, y'all. See? Listen to this right here. Do you see how they tried to do that? Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 are two totally different accounts. One is the account of man with no soul. The other is the account of man with soul. We're going to finish this out. Critics of the Lilith legend could argue that that if Lilith was that if the Lilith legend was true, then why is their existence in Genesis so tenuously written? Notice this guy didn't even bring up Genesis five, like I said, y'all. Genesis chapter five is the only spot that speaks on Lilith at all. We're gonna skip forward to the very end. There is evidence, there is also evidence that the Hebrew for serpent, Nakash, cannot indicate a snake, but rather implies the serpent was a human inhabited by demonic spirits. Job 26, 13, Isaiah 27, 1, identify the serpent under the title of Leviathan as fleeing upon wings. This is certainly suggested of the, of the Lilith legend. Furthermore, Job 26, 13 implies that the serpent was created in a similar manner, similar to Adam. That was fashioned and formed out of the dust of the earth into a golem like Adam. This also supports the serpent identity as Lilith. Look. Look. I don't know who people think to thought to think to thought to think to think you were. But I'm posting this in the comment section. Look for it. Look for it. Okay. I can't stress this enough. Part two to this one coming real soon.